tips from Korea on how to deal with that mask life. This is the MKH YouTube channel. My husband Hugh is out at the moment, so I'm going to be doing this video. Monsoon season literally just started in Korea, so it is so humid right now and it's really cloudy and it probably looks really dark behind me but it's not actually that dark. For those that are wondering we are filming an apartment tour video tomorrow but probably won't be edited until next week because Hugh's family is visiting soon. So living in Korea we are used to wearing masks so we have air pollution, it's polite to wear them when you're sick, masks can be part of fashion. Remember K-pop 10 years ago? Now masks are so important and combined with testing and tracing, they are a really important part of how to deal with this pandemic. The virus is transmitted in droplets, so when used correctly, masks are actually really effective in stopping the spread. <sighs> On a side note, it is ridiculous that this has become a political issue in the US and that some people refuse to believe the science. When they had that tweet months ago about masks don't work, when they were just trying to stop people from hoarding all the medical masks, Asia just looked on in horror. We knew that this was going to backfire. And then when they did realize that just simple cloth masks actually work, the damage had been already done. Because people that are too selfish to wear a mask are going to latch onto that. And it's hard to educate a population that refuses to listen. So as this pandemic goes on and the unfortunate time that it's going to take to maybe get a vaccine and then vaccinate enough people, masks are just going to become part of normal life. I don't think it's all that bad though. So let's talk about how to deal with that mask life, the benefits of it and the annoying things. You guys had some questions on Twitter, so I'll be trying to answer them as well. Here in Korea, we have a really in-depth understanding of how many pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic people could be in the population and spreading virus. Because in Korea, they have amazing tracking and testing. So when there is a cluster and they test everybody and they test everybody that was in contact, they can actually see how many people have it but are asymptomatic. In some cases, out of all the people that actually have the virus, up to 60% of people can be asymptomatic. That is really scary. But the good thing is, masks reduce that spread so much. So a mask somewhat protects you from getting the virus. It protects you a little bit. But the most important thing is it stops you from spreading to others if you have it and you're asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. And it's shown that even simple cloth masks make a difference. They don't have to be medical masks. Hello, you can go. Are you finished? No, I just started. Go, go, go. There is Hugh. Okay, run, run, run. He's going to be in his office out there. So I don't know, you might just see his head in the background somewhere there. Whoa, the humidity. In this video, I'm going to show you some different types of masks that we have in Korea. Talk about reusing or disposing masks and how to deal with things like the dreaded mask acne. In Korea, we have no lockdown. We've just had some moderate social distancing and that's it. Most of life has continued pretty much as normal. So I think Korea is a really great example of how things might look uh, for, for countries, what will be normal like the next few years. So mask wearing is normal and it's required on things like public transport, going into big offices, going into convenience stores and masks are readily available and there's even government subsidized masks as well for people. Does this mean that everybody wears a mask completely correctly all the time? No, it does not. You will see so many Ajashis with their mask pulled down, having a cigarette. When people are walking around with drinks, they have their mask down. But the difference is when most of the population is wearing a mask, it is shown to have a huge difference. So my biggest worry in life at the moment is somehow being a super spreader. And this should be your worry too as well, right? It's not just about you, it's about your community. You should be doing your best to avoid causing harm to other people. In Korea, they're talking about this is the second wave um, of the virus here because our numbers have been going up again. So today there was 51 new cases and that is a worry. They're worried about that. 51 new cases is unacceptable. In the US today, there was over 26,000 new cases. 
Okay, different types of masks. So we do deal with some air pollution in Korea. It's been better this year, but we had a year like last year that was really, really bad. So we are used to wearing a mask for that. And I'll show you my air pollution mask. So this is a reusable one that has a filter in it that is changed and this seals, somewhat seals around the face. So it sits up close against that. So you are trying to breathe through this. So this can be worn. Uh, when dealing with this pandemic uh, but it does have to be washed a lot as well and the filters changed the thing is the thing with um air pollution ones is a lot of really nice fashion ones that look really great because they've been a thing for longer so i'm hoping to see more really fashionable just normal masks as well that don't need to be air pollution because this seals around my face it's a ceiling around my face which is not as great in summer uh, this is a disposable type mask in Korea. So a lot of these, they do still talk about the, the pollution, the dust and that type of thing. Um, but they are used for this as well. Now, this is one that is sees folded like this. And then when you put it on, it's got, it comes quite like this around your face. Um, and I don't like these type of ones because my face is quite small and I find it rides up into my eyes and then it's like sticking me in the eyes. And if you do have that problem with wearing masks, you just need to find a different type of mask that suits you better. So I do wear these sometimes, but I usually prefer a different type of one. This type of one, this type of one is annoying for me. Look at this. Yeah. So this is the type of one I prefer more. So as you can see, it's like this, and this is the bit that's going over your nose. So it doesn't have as much of that sort of sharp bit going there, and of course under the chin there. I like this one more as well because it doesn't rub my makeup off as bad, which we're gonna talk about later. So also when you're out, you don't want to be touching your mask too much, but there's going to be times you have to touch it. Try to make sure that your hands are as clean as possible, sanitize them, and then adjust your mask. And try to have a mask that doesn't ride up into your eyes, which has always been my problem. That's why I like this type of one. This is another type that I like. So this is very, very simple. It's a square like that, but then you, the wire, the, when you get these type of masks, if you've never worn a mask before and you're unsure how, how it uh, goes, you bend the wire to fit your nose here, and then you make sure this is underneath your chin. And masks should always be worn over your nose as well. Lots of people don't want to do that and just have it down here, but for it to be effective, it should be over your nose covering like this. So even though that, starts as a square thing like that you just bend it a little bit more to suit your face so i like this type more because i can manipulate it a little bit more for my face so it's a better fit for me and of course with these you're going to have some air flow coming here that that is fine because it's the droplets that are the thing that's transmitting the virus. And so something that is in front of your mouth, in front of your nose is going to reduce that. I'm filming all these after and inserting them in so my makeup doesn't get wrecked because that's what we'll be talking about in a little bit. This is, this is a type of one that's really easy to pull down as well like that. It's not great to have your mask pulled down but sometimes you do need to pull it down for things. So there we go. I like the black color as well. I feel like it can match with some things nicer. Not this one though, but other things. It can match nicely. In Korea, you also have a lot of these fabric type ones like this. So these are often used for fashion as well. So since it's a thick fabric, this still works because it's still uh, stopping the, the moisture and the droplets like that. And these fit really close on your face. So these are great in winter. A lot of people wear these in winter because it keeps your face warm as well. Also, you should not handle masks as much as I'm handling them because uh, yeah, you want to limit how much you handle them. But I'm doing it for this video, okay? This type of cloth mask. Oh, I feel like this one's a little bit small. Like that. This is very, very much up against the skin like that. Like I said, these ones are better for winter. Also, as I'm talking, I, in the light, I can see some droplets coming from my mouth as I'm talking. This is why masks are so important when you're out in public, because you don't realize how much is coming out of your mouth. 
Okay, so what about for kids? So we have a type here. Often they, you know, can have cute pictures on them and that type of thing. A lot of them are just plain white like this. I won't touch this too much, but this is just simply a smaller version of this one for kids, right? And also our local government uh, has been sending out some masks as well. So you can see here, there's the government thing there. And this is a kids one and it's a nice fabric one. This also has like a nice liner in there as well. Now it is summer and it sucks wearing a mask in summer. And I have heard talk that they're designing and making masks that are more for summer and they have already sold out. I might do a video on that later when I know more about it. And also it's like a monsoon season has just started. So the temperatures dropped a little bit. It's just the humidity, but we had a heat wave the other day and there was actually announcement saying if you were outside and you're really hot take off your mask as long as you are social distancing so that can be something that people are really worried about like how do you how can you deal with the heat while you have a mask on um you know you don't want people getting sick or fainting like that but it they're saying just be logical in the situation. Like if you feel like you're going to faint and you're far enough away from people, then just take it off. Um, also like if I'm walking through a park and there's nobody there, I'm gonna take my mask off for a bit. There's a mountain that I walk up on and nobody on the path, I'm gonna take my mask off. You don't have to have it on outside the whole time. Like cafes and restaurants are open here. So you go into a cafe and you go into a restaurant and you're taking it off because everybody is still, you know, hand sanitizer, doing their best, trying to be careful, but it doesn't mean that life has stopped completely here because it hasn't at all. So disposable ones should really just be worn for one day and then be thrown out and when you take it off you don't want to touch any of the inside bit that's like all the moisture in there you want to mostly handle it on here and you want to roll it up you can wrap the things around it and you want to put it straight in the rubbish bin now if you have a cloth one you need to wash that after every use so that can go straight into the laundry straight into the washing machine and wash it like that now if you are in a situation where you do have to reuse a disposable mask because you just don't have enough i have heard that steaming them a few times can work uh, but also be aware you, you don't want to expose yourself to too many chemicals that might be in the process of making the mask um, and also the the inside bit can the fibers can start coming off a little bit so i find that with uh, my filters on my air pollution mask so you can use a filter for about 10 times before you need to change it but towards the end it can get really tickly and itchy inside because the fiber is just coming out a little bit and so that's not pleasant either there's also products now that take a bit of the strain off your ear so you could have a band going around here that helps if you're wearing a mask for really long periods of time. There's also containers that companies are making. So when you do go out to a coffee shop or a restaurant, uh, you put your mask in this plastic thing like that. So it's not contaminating other stuff or getting contaminated from other stuff. So talking about some of the benefits of wearing a mask, it can be great if you're an introvert and you're avoiding talking to people, uh, especially when you've got like a hat on and a mask on. There's a lot of things that I do find as an introvert to be quite comfortable with mask wearing when I go out. I don't feel that I need to think about my facial expressions as much because most of my face is, is covered anyway. So take advantage of it how you can. How to wear glasses with a mask. So I don't wear glasses. So I did have to research a little bit about this. And there's a few hacks like putting like a cloth tape there, um, putting the glasses on. Some people wear the mask up higher and then put the glasses on top of the mask. There's also products that are anti-fogging. So things like anti-fog protective cover that you spray on or put on. But other people have also found that washing your glasses with just normal soap can help as well. Let me know if you've tried any of them. Uh, now what about sunglasses? So my friends and I mostly are not wearing sunglasses this summer and wearing a hat instead because it is annoying wearing sunglasses with a mask. And hats do block a lot of the light. So that's what we have been doing instead of wearing sunglasses. And it's great if you're just going out for a little bit. I don't worry about my hair. I don't worry about my makeup. I don't worry about my face. I just have mask and hat. It's so easy.
Next problem is mask acne. Now this tends to happen when you start wearing a mask and then you start to notice that you're getting pimples along your jawline or around your mouth. It makes sense because you're breathing into your mask so all the bacteria coming out of your mouth is staying there getting on your skin and also fabric from mask rubbing on your skin as well can cause acne. Also you get really sweaty in masks so it's all this sweat it's getting trapped in your pores and your pores are like I'm gonna make pimples. Okay some tips wash your face as soon as you get home so you're washing all that nastiness off. Make sure you have a clean mask, that you're not reusing a mask too many times. Try for prevention rather than just trying to treat it all the time. Have a good skin routine and make sure you have a mild exfoliant as well that is going to help. And also put on a mild acne cream every day so you're sort of pre-empting pimples are going to come up. All those small ones that you haven't quite seen yet, that is going to help with that. Nothing too extreme, like you don't want to be using really, really intensive um, acne stuff that's going to irritate it. You just want some mild stuff for the ongoing prevention. I had a bunch of mask acne months ago when we first started wearing masks a lot more but my skin has kind of adapted I think with that and not, I'm not getting those big cystic ones that I wore before. Makeup! How to wear a mask when you want to have a full face of makeup? You can't really! <laughs> so this is a tough one. A mask rubs off your makeup really badly. The worst thing is it rubs off your foundation really badly. And also in summer you get hot and sweaty so you just have beads of sweat sitting on top of your makeup under your mask and it's awful. And then the, the parts of the mask that rub around the edge, especially across the nose, are gonna get really red. Even if you don't naturally get like red skin, you might get a redness or irritation where that rubs as well. So what can we do when we wanna wear makeup with a mask? Of course, eye makeup. Go full on with your eye makeup. You can do as much as you want. Your eye makeup is not going to get affected by the mask. Eyebrows too. Eyebrows are still going to be in fashion I think because it's one of the things we can still do on our face. Lipstick is a no-no. Like that is just going to be a whole joker mess underneath. And heavy foundation is out too. In Korean skincare there is a philosophy around making your skin as good as it can be so that you can actually go out without wearing any foundation or wearing any BB cream. All the effort goes into trying to have flawless skin rather than just covering it up. However, this can be really hard. Some people are gifted with like naturally flawless skin and yes, we hate you. For me, I have skin that gets red really, really easily. I have pigmentation, I have acne scars and I've had to come to terms with showing my skin more in a way that I would have previously covered it all up. And I have been covering up my skin as much as I can since age 13. I don't mind my pigmentation too much. But my redness is what is really frustrating. There are a bunch of products that can help though. And even just the sort of short term. So they work for a few hours. Um, just calming down that redness. So I'll show you some of the products that I use now. And I'm still trying to find the best, the absolute holy grail. But I think a lot just depends on people's uh, skin and depends on what your skin is up to, you know, at the time and what is irritating it. So if you're able to, a lightweight tinted moisturizer or a very lightweight BB cream might be enough that it doesn't rub off too much when you have a mask on. However, there may be some times for work where you do need a full face of makeup and you do need to wear a mask and you don't want your makeup to be completely ruined because a mask can really, really ruin your makeup. For example, we had to do some speeches at a conference recently in Seoul. So a lot of people that were supposed to be flying in were just doing it by video chat, but they still had quite a few people in person there uh, for these speeches and they're all socially distanced, like all on separate tables like that. And we were up on stage doing these speeches. And this was being live streamed as well. So I knew that I couldn't have like just this rubbed off like redness and makeup that was just ruined like that. So I did my full face of makeup and then we went downstairs to the conference rooms and social distance and hand sanitizer and I held a mask up to my face so that when I was talking it was still you know it wasn't touching my skin but it was still there was still a barrier there and then I went up on stage and did my speech and also they temperature checked and everything like that and there wasn't any cases 
um, of the virus there at all and that was a few weeks ago. So there are ways to do conferences like that and there are ways to deal with having to wear a mask as well. Another way that I deal with the mask issue is for example when I go in to do radio. So I will do some makeup at home, get straight into the car, Hugh will drive me there, drop me off and then as I get out of the car I put my mask on and I go in, go through the... They scan you the body temperature thing, they make sure you've got a mask on and make sure you hand sanitize. I sign in, I go up to the studio and then of course for radio we can't have a mask as we're doing radio so take off the mask and it's only with those people there that we don't have masks on to do radio. As soon as we come out of the studio, mask goes back on. And when I do take my mask off to, to do radio, I'll just check like how red is it. I haven't had the mask on for too long and I'd like to use this type of one instead of this type of one because it can sort of float a little bit over my nose like that and that's it's just a lot of experimentation and trying to work out what is the best mask to use in this situation something that's still protecting other people but allowing you to still look professional when you do take your mask off in that type of situation so how to get kids to wear a mask this can definitely be a struggle so when we were dealing with more air pollution it was a lot harder to get our son who is now almost three um, to get him to actually wear a mask and he would some days and he wouldn't other days and the thing with air pollution is that it wasn't all the time it was only sometimes so he would get used to you know not wearing a mask and like a week or two is a long time in a two-year-old's life and then suddenly we'd be like oh you have to put this mask on again and he would resist but now it's masks every day and kids in Korea are just kind of adapting and getting used to that but some things to do are make sure the whole family is wearing them when you go out. So I know a lot of kids are the ones reminding their parents now, oh, mommy, daddy, you've got to put your mask on because they're thinking about that as well. So buy or make masks that have like your kids favorite colors or favorite characters. So a lot of handmade ones with like, you know, the uh, robots or whatever they like, dinosaurs, that type of thing, if that is going to get them to wear the mask. Also matching masks with dresses or that type of thing there's a lot of innovative ways that parents are making kids wear masks you can explain the importance to older kids and maybe just bribe the younger kids and don't stress too much if a very young child is not going to wear a mask if they're just pulling it off you also want to pick your battles i know that uh, parents might be feeling very anxious and very stressed about this as well but you do also need to pick your battles like if you are somewhere where you are social distancing um, and it's okay for the kid to take their mask off for a little bit you can do that although in korea you know there'll be things like you have to have a mask to go into the convenience store people are not really really strict on that i think there's a lot of understanding about how hard it is with kids. There was a question on Twitter about how to look cute or sexy <laughs> in a mask and I think you just treat it like another fashion item, like match it with things, see what it looks good with, have different colors, that type of thing. Masks have already been a huge part of fashion in Korea and in K-pop so have a look for some inspiration. Also they asked about storing them. If you have clean ones, that are like cloth ones. A lot of people hang them by their door so they grab them as they go out. We have all our disposable ones that are right as we go out. We've got drawers there. Speaking of disposable ones, I do hope that governments start to think about the environmental impact of them as well and how to recycle them or how to dispose of them in a way that's not going to uh, affect wildlife. So that's a side note there. Also a question about how to convey emotions when you have a mask on. So I think use of your eyes, <laughs> you have to show everything with your eyes and a lot of body language as well, especially if you're still trying to social distance with people, maybe be more exaggerated like that. But I think it's something that humans can just adapt to as well. We've already had this situation with the, the pandemic, uh, 1918, 1919 pandemic where people were wearing masks. So I think it's something that humanity's already been through before and I think we just adapt. Okay, this is already a long video, so I hope I covered most of those questions that people asked. And please leave some questions down below because 
you know, for us in Asian countries, for us in Korea particularly, I mean, we're quite used to masks, you know. It's not such a scary thing for us. It just becomes a normal part of, like, what you wear. Uh, but it might, might be really scary for some people. And it might be scary if, you know, they've got family saying all these things or masks cause this problem and that, which is absolute nonsense. Like, please just look to countries that are already doing this. You can see the rates of it here, what our daily rate is, we can see uh, that it works to stop the spread as much as possible and it's something that is really simple to do. It might be a little bit uncomfortable, might be a little bit annoying, but I think we need to think about other people more than we think about ourselves in this situation. I promise apartment tour, a new apartment tour is coming soon, so please subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more about life in Korea, about being an intercultural family and living in Korea, and you can check out the social media as well. Often on Twitter, I'll ask you guys if you have questions or if you have a video suggestion. So follow on there and you can see more of our daily life on social media like Instagram. And I will see you later. Bye bye.